G'day guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to find the moment of inertia of a uniform disk about its center of mass g. So this is the disk just here. It's got constant density because we're dealing with a uniform disk, and it's got a radius of r, and its center of mass right here is g. Okay, now before I chug through all the integration, let me quickly take a step back and tell you about the formula used for moment of inertia. Let's say we've got a rigid body just here, and we want to find the moment of inertia of this rigid body about point A. Well, that's written as I subscript A, and it's given by the formula R squared dm, where dm is just a small element of mass. So this would be of mass dm, and R is just the distance from your point A towards that mass. That's all this is. That's what R is, and that's what dm is. And so I think the hardest thing in this, in this particular question is to find out what R and what dm is in this particular context of a disk. Okay, so let's quickly draw our disk again. Let me make it a little bit clearer. Let's quickly draw a disk again, right? And let's draw our center of mass here, g. We could, if we wanted to, choose an element of mass which has an area of dx dy, right? I would strongly recommend not using this element of mass, not because it wouldn't work, but because the maths would be very complicated. You'd have to use double integrals and it would be quite messy. I would strongly recommend otherwise using this element of mass. It's going to be just a small ring. And I, I really hope I can draw this, sorry, I'm. <laughs> My, my drawing skills aren't too shabby, but this is it. This, this small ring, right, with negligible thickness is what we're going to be using as our element of mass dm. So this is going to be dm just here. I'll tell you what this mass is actually equal to in a second. But as you can tell, r is just the distance from your point towards your element. So in this context, r is going to be equal to this. And let me draw it in blue so I don't confuse you. So in this context, r is just going to be this just here, this is going to be r, okay? Now let's talk about what the mass is of this small element of mass. Well, we know if we were to get scissors here and cut this and, and, and spread it out into a line, it would look like this. And we know because the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r, the length of this inner ring is actually going to be equal to 2 pi r, right? That's because the radius here is r, so this length here is 2 pi r, okay? Now you might be tempted to try and find the length of this outer ring, but I'll save you some time because the length here is of a thickness dr. That means that the outer length of this ring is actually approximately equal to 2 pi r as well. So the approximate area, the approximate area of this strip is actually just 2 pi r times by its thickness, so we're treating it like a rectangle, so its area is going to be equal to, dA is going to be equal to 2 pi r times by dr, okay? So notice we're using the fact that the thickness is negligible, so we can treat this like a rectangle, okay? Okay, well, we're not done. We haven't found dm yet. We found dA, but fortunately, we know density is relating to mass and area, and we can say dm is in fact just our density times by dA, so it's going to be our density times by 2 pi r dr. This is our element of mass just here. Okay, so we know what r is, we know what dm is, let's plug through the calculus. So we know that our moment of inertia of our disk about point g is going to be equal to the integral of r squared, right, that's just this value of r, times by dm, and dm is rho times by 2 pi r dr, okay? Now, I'll, I'll talk about what the limits of this integral are in a second, but let's just simplify this. Okay, well, you might be thinking, well, how on earth do we evaluate the density? We're given that the density of this disk is uniform, so the density is constant, right? So we can actually suck density, this character rho outside of the integral sign because we know it's constant. So we can say that's just going to become rho times by 2 pi times by 2 pi times by the integral of r cubed r cubed dr. 
Notice I've times just r squared by r. That's how I got r cubed. Now let's talk briefly about the limits of this integral. Well, the way I like to think about it is, for what values of r does this ring swoop out all possible rings that make up this circle? So in fact, you can tell that there will be an, a whole bunch of different values, and it will go from r is equal to 0, this tiny little ring just here, to r is equal to capital R. So I know that's not particularly intuitive, but what I'm saying is that the limits of this integral should be from 0 to capital R. We're creating a whole bunch of different rings that make up this entire disk, okay? So that's what our limits are. And this, become, this is where the easy part comes in. This is just maths from here on in. So what we can do is I'm going to write this as 2 pi rho, and I'm going to evaluate this integral. The integral of r cubed is r to the 4 divided by 4, with limits from 0 to r. Well, that becomes quite easy. This is going to be 2 pi times by rho times by r4 on 4. That's quite easy. This is going to be a half times by, um, let's see, it'll be rho pi r4. And it seems like we're done, right? We could box this off, but I've got a sneaking suspicion this can be simplified more. Don't forget, we know that the mass of this entire disk can be calculated using the area of the circle and knowing that its density is constant. In fact, we can write our total mass of our disk is going to be equal to our density of our disk because it's constant. We can just use the same row. Our density of our disk times by the area of this entire circle, which is pi times by r squared, right? I'm going to use this to substitute in here. So I'm going to be really clever with what I factor out here. I'm going to write this as a half times by rho times by pi times by r squared times by r squared. Notice this is the same thing. I've just factored it out, right? And notice this is the same as our total mass. So we can be really sneaky here, and we can write this as a half m r squared. And here we go. This is the well-known result that the moment of inertia of a uniform disk about its center of mass is equal to a half m r squared, where r is the radius and m is the mass of the disk. There we go, guys.